Please welcome to the Leon Loft, Camp. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Evan, Taylor, Matt. We appreciate you being here. Uh, what do you want to start with? Um, we're going to start with a little acoustic rendition of our song, Believe. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to leave that tremolo on. You hear that? It's cool. All right. How are we doing, everybody? Listening to Ann Arbor's 1071 right now. We are live at the Leon Loft with the band Camp. They are going to be at Pine Knob tonight. We call it Pine Knob again, indeed. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. That was lovely. Um, so, you know, we've all, all, all of us in this room, we've all been through this unique period of time um, with grief and, and loss uh, for all of us. Um, and also this uh, period of time to reevaluate what's truly important. Then I saw the title to this album, Lavender Days, and I was like, lavender, like immediately. It's a great scent. It's a great color. <laughs> like it's calming. It's just calming. Um, was that sort of what went into the songs, like as you were thinking it through? Yeah. Um, I think, like you said, lavender is a, it's a very, you know, it's a visceral word because there's a lot of sensory, uh, you know, sensations, I suppose, tied into it visually and scent and like memories, you know, everybody had like a, a grandma who wore lavender perfume or <laughs> had like the potpourri or something in the bathroom, you know, and um, I think it's a very like contemplative uh, 
energy for me. Lavender days, though. Like, is that now, as you look back over the last couple of years, do you sort of see them as that for, yeah. a, or for a particular reason? Uh, well, yeah. I guess my whole bit on the title is just that, you know, whether you want to um, direct it just to the, the pandemic days, you know, or to other learning moments in your life. But I think the sentiment I was trying to convey with that and through the record is just that like, they might not be, you know, the golden days or they're not the worst days of your life either, but uh, days that you learn from and soak in and um, come out the other side different and hopefully better. Hopefully, yeah. Um, so this period of time for, for camp, for all bands, uh, it was sort of binary. You know, like it was on, it switched to totally off. <laughs> One to zero. Mm -hmm. So, um, And as the songwriter, like that meant that you really were not able to experience uh, the kinds of things that you saw on the outside. Like it was really now down to what was closest to you. Mm -hmm. um, and you probably, I would think, wanted to create songs to heal a bit yourself, your people, your band, your audience, ultimately, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of a, a healing quality to them. Yeah, no, well said. Um, yeah, I think, you know, universally, it was a, a pretty big, like, um, invitation for everybody to look in the mirror, you know, and like you said, you know, whether that's taking time to work on yourself or, or mend uh, relationships with, you know, those around you, closest to you, um, I think that's, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Could you feel that, like, as you were writing, like, I just, I feel better. I yeah. went in not feeling so great, now I feel better about yeah, it. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely a, a palpably healing record to create. Well, it sounds that way. I've heard it. I, it sounds that way. It comes out June 24th, by the way, just just so you know. Uh, what do you want to do next? Um, let's see, we're on Cable 4. You want to do another? Yeah, uh, like Penny a, or something? Yeah, let's do Penny. <laughs> Tuck, I, I played that last song with my boost on accidentally, so just, just FYI, the acoustic is going to be a little quieter. Rain 
so hard that a tent started leaking on us. We ain't got much, well we got seen enough when the going gets tough. Make our own good luck. talking to midwestern writers <laughs> I, really, no, I understand i'm biased and and this is not in any way a, a, a shot at my friends in the south and the east and the west but i like talking to midwestern writers it, it it there seems to be a rootedness to the song craft um you can go back a long way and you can bring it right up to now um people from michigan and ohio and in indiana and you know minnesota like the observations are more concrete. They're more real. They're less likely to be fantastical. And like, I'm going to create a story about a spaceman who comes and becomes the top number one selling. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, do you find that in your writing? Like, it's that you really center on what's closest to you. The observations more tan, uh, tangible. Well. I don't know if I can speak to that fully because <laughs> I don't want to box myself in. And Correct. If I want to write a song about a about space the spaceman <laughs> coming down and becoming yeah. the number one, yeah, 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 yeah right. Of course. Um, do you take notes on your life and what's around you more? Uh, sure. Yeah. For, for for those kind of observations. Yeah, I I think that's a very um, you know uh, instinctive thing that writers do. You know, you're obviously inspired by your environment whether it's conscious or unconscious you know and what you're listening to and those in your life you know whenever i get into new bands i i find myself kind of leaking into their genre you know and their head spaces and i think it's kind of a cool like everlasting experience you know to trace the thread of a writer and um the influences on his or her you know, output, I guess. Yeah. And I love that. You don't want to be boxed in answer. That's actually, that's perfect. <laughs> it's just perfect. So I did see though, that once you did actually, uh, uh, get back out on the road, you were able to do shows, travel around. Mm -hmm. A lot of these songs came from that, like while you were out on the road. So I will assume that that is actually an important part of the process, just being out and experiencing new things and being around other things, other bands, other mm -hmm. people. Um, and it probably helps to set the home life in context. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, from a writing standpoint, I find too that like, um, you know, I, I guess there's no like, for me, there's no, um, there's not like a set way that I write. I never sit down to write. But sometimes in a weird way, um, the road restricts that a lot for me where I don't get time mm -hmm. uh just with myself and a guitar or you know you don't get a ton of time alone or in the right headspace to want to create and that in a way kind of bottles things up so that when i do get home or do find that little oasis it kind of like bursts out you know um at least my experience i don't everybody writes different when you come up with something on the road do you immediately want to take that in front of an audience since you're already <laughs> uh, out on the road like you can test it immediately yeah of course you do but it's also like you know there's already such a back catalog of songs recorded and written that are waiting that mm -hmm. sometimes you get to cut the line but a lot of times it's <laughs> get to the back buddy yeah. <laughs> wait your turn yeah. wait your turn uh tell us about the one you're gonna do next what do you want to do well uh i don't know what we're gonna do next you want to do apple tree 
Sure. For the last, like, this is the last, like, live song, right? Yeah. Um, Apple Tree. It's been a long, it's been around for a while, actually. When do you think I showed this one to you? few years ago. It's kind of just a, I don't know, I call them sleeper songs, just like didn't like bark at me, but I, I knew it was cool and catchy and yeah. Oh, yeah. it was also one of those songs that it felt like it kind of just like fell out of my mouth. Like it, some songs take years, months, weeks to finish. And this one was like kind of like a 15 minute or, you know, just like a, and then closed the notebook and was like, cool. <laughs> that, was, that was rad. Day is done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it in standard or half step? Uh, half step. Cool. My tuner's not clicking muted. So I'm just gonna turn it. Raspberry velvet and the rabbits in the hole where the apple tree fell two years ago. Man, you could never stop it, it's always gonna go. Hiding in the cotton, get a tickle in your soul. And I could really go for a little bit of rock and roll. Yeah, I could really go for a little bit of rock and roll. Let's go looking at the shed you can Wander around the country in the pouring rain Win a couple dollars, lose a couple games Walk tall laughing in the sugar cane Then take a trip on a golden airplane Yeah, then take a trip on a golden airplane Can you tell me what your heart's been through? Tell me where you're going to Tell me all the things you'd like to do, but you can't Cause you're scared that you're going to hell Feels alright, but you can't really tell All of that cigarette ash is good and well It's good and well There's a mother of pearl in the sand Quarter of the size of the palm of your hand Hold it till the sun sure does look grand Hanging from your mirror on a rubber band Your whole damn life you never even had a plan It's like your whole damn life you never even had a plan So tell me what your heart's been through Tell me where you're going Tell me all the things you'd like to do, but you can't Cause you're scared that you're going to hell Feels alright, but you can't really tell All of that cigarette ash is good and well It's good and well
15 minutes. Total keeper. This is awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, listen, we're going to go back to the station now, but we are continuing here at the Leon Loft with Camp, with Matt and Evan and Taylor. Um, and by the way, if you're listening out there and you want to be here for one of these experiences, keep listening to the radio station. More experiences here at the Leon Loft on the way. Uh, the new album coming out June 24th. It's called Lavender Days on the Mom and Pop label. Camp is with uh, the Lumineers tonight at Pine Knob. And tickets are still available for that show. And now it is back to more music on Ann Arbor's 1071. Great. All right. Thank you all. I mean, you know what? I'm thinking we should maybe do like an applause out, like make it really huge back at the station. They'll just hear like people going nuts. And then they have to fade it down. And people just think, oh, I'm missing. I'm missing out. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so this band has been... Um, aggressively DIY for a decade, self-produced, self-released records. Um, this time you actually did have a producer come on board, a good one, Brad Cook, um, down in the Carolinas. And uh, um, I, people would know his work, uh, his Golden Messenger and Waxahachie. And we talked about him with Houndmouth last year. Um, and he's a, he's a song guy and he's a harmony guy. Like he's, that's kind of his, his thing. Um, but you started with him and then you, you sort of took everything from those sessions. You went back home and then finished it up the way you always had done stuff like on your own. Um, what marked the difference between those two periods of time? Uh, learning. Okay. Yeah. Just learning and um, comfortability. About learning about self process, the songs all themselves. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. And just kind of, we started something and then, halfway through it um realized something about it you know the the album the record ourselves whatever it may be um and decided that it was a a nice moment to pull everything back to to our our way of doing things did the songs change uh radically between what you took uh to work on with him versus what you ended up finishing sometimes um he had a pretty cool imprint on one or two songs but we also redid a lot of what we did with Brad. Mm -hmm. Can you identify what it is about this band, which is usually a four piece? Can you identify, you know, what uh, what that magic is like when you really just? You, I mean, you've been doing it so long yourselves. Like there has to be some uh, thing. Yeah, I don't know. You know, right. I suppose it's like anything. It's the older you get, the more true the cliches are. And I think we just really love each other. And you know. Evan and I have known each other since we were seven, eight years old. And Matt's been a really integral process of us growing as people and as friends and, and musically. And I think the way we've chosen to fold in new members over time um, and choose our friends and people that we love and respect over hired guns, per se, really, you know, permeates through the music. And is I think it lends itself to the sincerity that I hope we convey. So people don't enter your project. They don't enter your song. They really enter your circle. They yeah. become a part of your circle. Exactly. A friend. Yeah. 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 Why? Every band were like that. <laughs> people are greedy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, that actually brings up another thing. I was going to ask you about that. Um, the, when you say people are greedy, um, there are so many ways to be greedy uh, mm -hmm. if you have a band. True. <laughs> um, th that kind of cooperation uh, is something that, that, that takes work, you know, to cultivate that sort of relationship within the band. Um, so I, I don't have, what I don't have are sort of songwriting and arranging credits, but like, is everything sort of, I mean, you are the writer on the band, but is it really always a band project? Yeah, yeah. You, the songs would not appear the, the way they do before you without the boys, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that they trust me to to pen the bones, you know, and that's not something that I take lightly. You know, it's, I've always been a kind of a solitary creator and writer, but then, you know, when I bring it to Matt or Evan or whoever gets to hear it first, you know, I have a lot of trust in them to, to dance on it the way that I need to, to hear it, you know? And they lend their craft in unspeakable ways, even mm. if it's not 
necessarily a writing credit, you know? Yeah. Are you open to, you know, those changes? Like, yeah. Like, I mean, you have to be willing to take that sort of criticism and say, oh yeah, maybe I was a little bit wrong there. Let's go in a different oh, direction. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's been a big, you know, I think I've kind of weird, but in my old age, in my advanced age, <laughs> I've started becoming less and less stubborn, um, right. prideful, I guess, you know, yeah. It's just, I, I don't know. I've had just great experiences with these boys and, um, some songs are different, you know, and it's like from my heart and very like uh, personal things wo woven in there. And those aren't really uh, on the table for changes, mm -hmm. but some of them, you know, some of the most subtle gems on this record did not come from my brain. You know, it came from these boys and that's, that's what keeps me interested and in love with it all and in love with them. You know? Yeah. The power of yielding, mm -hmm. being able to, to be give it away. About, yeah, restraint is, yeah. yeah. Give it away. It takes time to learn that. It does. I just learned it last week. <laughs> <laughs> Man, talk about advancing age. What do you want to do next? Uh, I don't care. What do you want to hear? Anything. Really, whatever makes you happy. Life force. Bye. Sure. Wait, what? Life force. <laughs> <laughs> well... You got it, yeah. <laughs> Life force. See, now, I don't want to box myself in so that I can call songs Life Force later in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but we got you, Bubba. Driving through West Virginia And I've said I'm in thinner With that chip on my shoulder And this past year I got so much older of it sometimes I wish I had more time listening to her speaker mind I'm thinking about every day on my mind it's a different way are you a life force thinking about every day on my mind it's a different way are you a life force for me? Drinking coffee black as I Without falling out of my chair Been so numb for so many years I'm thinking about it every day On my mind, a typical way Are you a life force? Thinking about it every day On my mind, a typical way are you a life force? And it's so easy to be blinded by the light, to feel lonely in the night. It's blowing in the breeze, babe. I got dust in my eyes, rust in my mind. I'll be home come next spring. Won't you say you love me later? I am by Looking back over my life Spent the most of it time tied Pulling my 
about time It's just you and me and the stars and I Two fingers in a tight line Keep my head above the alpine Wish I'd had more time Listening to her speak her mind Think of mine every day On my mind a typical way On you a life force Think of mine every day On my mind a typical way On you a life force Think of mine every day On my mind So, I can't see much in this room, but I can see you singing every word. This is our super fan up front. Will you stand up for a second? <laughs> what is your name? Uh, I'm Sawyer. Sawyer? All right, Sawyer. Thanks. Sawyer has his autograph copy on vinyl here, by and by. That's just fantastic. Um, how old are you, Sawyer? I'm 10. 10. So, uh, Taylor and Evan have known each other even longer than 10. Like, what did you say, seven, eight Absolutely, years old? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Long way back. Long way back. You're 10 years, out, well, actually 10 years out of high school. Did you go to your 10 year reunion? I think we were missing it. We missed it. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> you got work. Uh, you didn't miss much. <laughs> I wasn't there, but I did go to a 10 year reunion and mm -hmm. you didn't miss anything. Sure. Um, but you know that is that is kind of a that's kind of a cool lifelong thing. Who were you as kids? Like when you knew each other in the neighborhood, who were you as kids? Just regular dudes, you know. When I was ten, I got my first BB gun. Um, played lacrosse. I played hockey. Yeah. Uh, lacrosse. <laughs> oh, so do I. Or I used to. I don't. Not now. But. That's tough. <laughs> yeah, what position? Um, for me, lacrosse. I was a midfielder. Oh. Ed was a defenseman, number seven, lefty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 150, 6'2". <laughs> 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 and music first entered that picture when? Um, not, not until much later. Yeah, we were sophomores in high school, and we had a couple classes together, uh. and... Um, we we kind of bonded over. We watched Remember the Titans in our. Uh, it was like a history cl or, mm. yeah, history class, and um, which obviously has a, a banging soundtrack. And we just like we're like, oh, I love it. You know, just started talking about music, and then um, we just kind of started messing around in his folks' basement, and occasionally after school with our our other buddy Sam, and and then we had a a little like senior project kind of like uh, like we made an album for our senior thesis basically yeah. um and it was it was bad it's bad <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's very um but i mean it's also in some ways like the sickest the sickest shit we've ever done it was you know good. It, yeah, yeah. It was pretty, yeah it was pretty good <laughs> but it was kind of like white boy reggae like you know we were very into like trevor hall and oh yeah you know yeah. <laughs> bob marley and ben harper and a little more heady um and uh, yeah, that was, that was before the days of, of the banjo or anything. So um, we tried to bury that on the internet as best we could. But yeah. I am. Uh, 
But you have a copy. There, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Has anybody else heard it? There's a select couple hundred people, yeah. Okay. I've, I've, I've dig deep. Yeah. I mean, we played a couple shows. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, we, we played a couple. Gigs. I'm not going to ask you to go there. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair yeah. enough. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much for spending time today. This was a blast. Um, we have time for one more song. Cool. I'm going to let you call it instead of the audience call it. Great. What do you want to do? Oh, all right. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking I was going to do one of our worst. <laughs> what do you want to hear, big dog? Whoa, that's sure. cool. <laughs> Slayer with the MVP. Yeah, kids I don't got, even know how to play Kids got taste. Job. You'll be fine. What's, uh, what's the idea? Uh, standard A minor, E minor. Uh, or C, C A, E minor, E minor. A minor. Oh. Uh, standard. Yep. Uh, yeah. Just coming through anymore? Got gotcha. you. Cool. All right. Moon smoke for solar. <laughs> Sunshine, I knew more smoke. 